if you haven't been here before, it's worth your while to check that out because they, they took a lot of cuts last year. That's a golf ring. Oh, it's, no, at the, at the Odeon. It's by the golf ring. Oh, you got the Yeah, I have the same thing. Yellow cam? This is yellow cam. Let me give this one in this direction. Let me take this one here. It's good. It's good. Have you been to oh, no. a tribute? It's, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You got the three-day pass, huh? Yeah. Oh, the Grateful Dead pass. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Here. Okay. There you go. Oh, go, go again. <laughs> Hello. I'm going to have to sit down and come on for a moment, so I'm going to take refuge in the Rainbow Gypsy Theater. Oh, okay. He's going to come on here and do a couple of numbers now. You rainbow gypsies. How about you? <laughs> yes, to the mission control. Here comes the real <laughs> 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 A little musical interlude to um, raise up the vibe for the 420 Council. We want to ride this ship up to the top. Oh, and, uh, we're featuring a song by Jiva, the queen of the Rainbow yeah, Gypsy tribe. Let's give her a round of applause. Warm her up there. Jiva. 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 Yeah. Jiva Las Vegas. Good out there. I love, I love this. It really is. You, you can't imagine, those of you from Holland, how wonderful this feels to be standing here in a room of people smoking marijuana. <laughs> in a public place. It's a tradition we want to keep going. Yes. We would like all to, over the world. We would like to bring this tradition all around the world. We would love for you to help us do it. So as you know, we gypsies travel from country to country, continent to continent, <coughs> collecting the music, the theater, the dance, the rituals, the culture of all the peoples of the earth, mix them together into a big bouillabaisse soup we call the Gypsy Theater. And uh, we're now going to take you to Jamaica, where we learn some gypsy songs from some Rasta growers. Cool. This is zero. I'm shifting across the fog. How does this light up? Yes. 
The next song we'll do is about the wisdom returning, the wisdom coming back. For this one, I'd really like to come down there with everybody because this is a certain song. So we're going to put the mics down on the ground. All right? House lights, please.
Stephen Gasson back up, continue with his rap and to make some more presentations from the seed companies. And um, I believe we're going to have uh, Fantuzzi come and give us a little music coming up shortly. Uh, give him a little support here. Stephen Gaskin at the mic. back in the 60s, meeting me at like the family dog in the Great Highways, a big rock hall out on the beach, and there'd be a thousand hippies there, you know. And sometimes we said it was like the, the, the Asheville Continental Congress. Because I was just thinking, there's this group of folks here who are from all over the world. And they come here and they go back where they came from and all their friends are just gassed to talk to them and interested and wants to hear everything. And it's like, you not only have a chance to say the good thing, you have a, a positive suck. <laughs> there that wants it, <laughs> you know? And one of the real beautiful things of, of the world is when you want to talk revolution and the folks want to hear revolution, you know? <sighs> I love that. Is there any more of the seed representatives here? I want to be sure that we don't leave any of them out. Does anybody come here? Anybody who has an independent they want to pass around or anything like that? Well, this is probably going to be my, my, my last real talking shot here this evening. And uh, I want to know what were the issues that other folks brought. We brought up, you know, a lot of the things and a lot of the issues. You know, I have I have an idea. I don't know how to do it or how to pull it off or how it should be done or, or if it's possible or anything like that. But I'd like to see more women because in my experience, there's not something on the gene that makes boys like pot better than girls like pot. I don't believe in that. <laughs> you know, it has not been my experience over the long haul that it's that way. Yes. Yes, yes, amen, say several ladies here. A woman, too. Yes, okay, now. Oh, and one. Okay, good. And uh, I was, th there's some way that we could, you know, help that out. I'm going to suggest to the staff, the High Times staff, you know, that there's some way that we can, you know, do something that, that women know that, that, they're, that they are being asked to come. You know, Steve thought that they had tried to do that with the Canabita in 95, when they, the goddess was the thing and, and uh, the poster was the, you know, the goddess with the leaves on her and all that. But uh, that, was, that was like a, a sweet and touching obeisance to the goddess. But what I want is the living and physical presence of the goddess. <laughs> No, uh, try to encourage that among your friends and, and, let, and let, let them know and if you have any ideas or if you want to write any letters to, to, to uh, High Times about it or anything, you know, if you have an opinion or some, something about that. That's kind of a little thing I want to kind of stir because I don't, I don't think, that, I also don't believe that, that, uh, that uh, women are any less revolutionary than men either. You know? 
Now, now tell me, man, where, tell me where this is from? From the southwest of the USA. From the southwest of the USA. I do with this? Yeah, roll it. Roll it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nominated. Well, I, I think it's, I nominated, you know, this here. Big Bird. Hail Bob. Run under the light of the Hail Bob. Quick. But you know, if I'm going to nominate that, just a second here. I'm going to have to have a little blood off the bottom of this, or I have some papers in my pocket. I, I, I just can't. Smoke the top. Just for the love of it. Somebody, what's that? What's that? Smoke the top. Okay, okay, good. I can keep talking. You can. Yeah? There is a seed. There's seed in the strain, and I apologize for that. However, it's for propagation. Okay, here we go. We got papes here. Good. All righty. All righty. Yes. Okay. Nominations here. Oh, here we go. That <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. No, I've got to talk to my senses about that. And it's been tough. It's been tough. It's been tough having to say, no, thank you. I'm actually going to have to form sentences. Wow. I've got to remember where I'm supposed to start at with all of this. You know the time splitting here. I want to start off with Green Prisoners release. Um, we have just been working on trying to get things together in a real hurried fashion at 124. Um, the guy whose place that we're using to do our operation out of had a very serious injury at, at just before <coughs> the cups and um, Walter Nunes stepped in and really gotten the group kicking and everybody else is coming back in and a few different things are happening and we've got, we've got a lot of activity going on surrounding Green Prisoners and what we do. Uh, also, we're, 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 I've talked with some people about this Hemp Olympics they want to put on. Now, I don't know all the details involving this, but from what I hear, there's, they've got some really beautiful pipes and things. And uh, it is a, it's like a um, charity event, so to speak. I wish there was someone who could speak a little bit more about all the specifics. If you want to find out, Thursday night, 7 o'clock, Green Prisoners Release. Yeah. It's going to be Thursday night at 7 o'clock, Green Prisoners Release. If anyone doesn't know where that's at, when you're at the Haas Museum or even standing at the Sensi C Cafe, if you look down the canal, the whole side of the wall is draped in green. In case you don't figure out that that's where we're at, but that's real easy to spot. Plus there's a few signs. But this Health Olympics thing should really be unique. It's the first time I've seen or even heard about it. Uh, obviously it's something that's, that's pretty big and was done before, and I think they, sounds like they've got some good ideas and a lot of fun. Oh, uh, yeah, like I said, there, I heard some really good things that caught my attention. And I said, yes, this is a great thing and we're going to do it. But on the activist side, on the activist side, we're fortunate that here in Amsterdam we don't have people who smoke marijuana in jail. 
But we do have them for selling it. Okay? And it's not legal here. So, we don't spend a lot of time affecting enough change here in Amsterdam. But there's so few of us that the things that hit our heart are usually connected to where most of us are from, which is America. So it's American injustice that I feel that we sometimes spend a lot of time, more time on because we can affect a change here. We know what a few of us can do. Just a few. We've got so many new ideas and it's all interconnected. I would think Michael's Guy is one of the new things that uh, people are discovering. You know, I've known Mike for a long time. And there hasn't been a lot of vocalization about his Guy. An inner circle of people, his old steady customers. But the word's getting out on, on not just his type of product, but so many different things. The work that Art Solis does in his group. My God, we're finally getting documents that we can use in our courts in America on scientific evidence. So when they say that, well, you know, uh, his tits are growing, you know, and um, he's changing even sex possible. 50 years you use I've smoked 32 years and that is the part of me that's grown using marijuana. But being a diabetic myself, I find that cannabis it raises my metabolism, which in the long run of cycle of things actually lowers my sugar, but only temporarily. But it does do it. You know, if nothing else, it relieves the stress and all the other things that add to your sugar elevation. Consequently, my father who died of diabetes and my mother who is on very insulin dependent, I'm still taking one of the weakest pills that's made for diabetes and it's never changed since I've been smoking cannabis. And that's been over 31 years. So, but back to the activist side, I touched yesterday on the part that we've had two very impressive bills passed on the Clinton administration, regardless of our feelings about the man, which aid us, certainly aids me in my endeavors because I've, I have a religious thing that I'm working on. With this new law that we've passed, it makes it really hard for people to mess with religion in America, as long as you're a legitimate religion. I've talked a little bit about the case that we had in New York where the Rastafarians were charged with excess of non Coptic church, excess with dealing large amounts of marijuana. Government conceded and gave them the benefit of the doubt on the misdemeanor charges, which were for simple consumption during their religious practices. Now, I'm not sure that the government or the court at that time actually realized what it was doing by, it, by honoring the defense that this is a legitimate thing to use in sacrament. Well, they certainly have. So you can see the, what I'm talking about here. We're talking about something that our government is saying, well, yes, it is considered sacrament in a religion. Now, that's great. But along with this, Mr. Clinton has passed a bill concerning racism and hate rape. Hate racism, rather. Well, as we've heard our Jamaican people speak about how they're blessed that their church can exist and they can do their thing in, in their ganja, and they do speak about the same, the same eluam, as we would say in God and Christianity for those who do the sun thing, sun Sunday. Um, we follow also the laws of Yehwa. So, it's not a religious doctrine that's so much at conflict here. No, certainly nowhere compared to what the Sun Worship Church is all have between them. It gets down to an acceptance of we will let, if they, if they say no to us, what they're saying is, is that your race separates yeah, you from the religion that you're about to have. And that's not going to fly. That'll never fly. They, even the feds themselves will have to come in at this point and say, whoa, we can't have this. Yeah, giant cane. It's not going to work. We got a lot, of, a lot of pioneering that needs to go on in America. All right. I used to be with yeah. the Libertarian Party in Northwest Florida. Um, 
for a lot of reasons I don't, I'm not with them any longer. Um, they, they didn't find cannabis a real issue to push forward for. Um, separating from the my son and the party. But, but, maybe with a new party, and I know quite yeah. a lot of people in a lot of different areas. And I know that Northwest Florida, in fact, all of my group of political activist people all feel the same about the hemp plant. Mm -hmm. These people would organize, and we've got a pretty good organization. It hasn't been real great because of libertarians. You can imagine, Democrats and Republicans do a great job making sure that no one knows what the libertarians are all about. And I'm not here to blow their horn, but they're a lot closer to our ideology. Okay? They know what we've got going, but they got it tough enough without taking on a bunch of people that they know the government doesn't like, doesn't want to deal with, and is trying to ignore it all they can. We need to get involved, every one of us, no. in America, hey, in pushing right. some of these pioneer projects. You don't have to push them all. Just pick one that, that's got your heart, that's got your attention. Okay. I got you. It could be from a sick person that you know that you say, you know, I'm going to spend a day out of a week doing yeah, activist really work. Okay, yeah. I got a list of people I'm going to call and talk to. I'm going to write a letter. Even all if right. it's just writing a letter to a guy, we can tell you who to target. A lot of these people will do things, you know, like I have to do a lot more than I've got, got 5,000 letters from people, folks. I'm going to have to say something here. I've got to make a statement. Now, if we just remain silent, they could say, well, if everybody gave a damn, then let me know. And he's right. And he's right. The church thing is a new thing that's following up. We know what went. We tried in Arkansas. There were some problems. I never even got a real answer as to what happened to what was happening, except that it failed. Okay? Um, it's not something I guess people want to talk about when they fail. They can't play. Okay? But um, that was then. We've got two new beautiful pieces of legislature since then. These people were willing to try it with what they were born with, which was they were going to hurt you. We're going to grow next door, and we told the cops we're going to grow next door. Are we ready for her? Or attempted to harvest. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be that active, but I'm involved with a group to where we're just trying to find a place where we can begin. And it'll spread. It'll spread everywhere. You know, I've found that computers, and we're so computer illiterate compared to other organizations that are formed, you can think of who we are. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. This thing? Yeah. Oh, man, how many people are on the net? Grab this light here. You need me to carry it? Yeah, I don't know how long you need. If you don't, you should really plug in. I know that you don't. Grab the light. If you don't, you know someone who does, and he feeds you information. And then you see the way it is. And you ask what's going on. I know that's my buddy. He's on But we all stuck in the Uh, Rita's on stage. Where's Rita? Rita's on stage. Practicing with the band. Uh, we can't go much further, though. It's going to be right here. When she comes off stage, she's in the other hall. Let's just hear the other hall. It's not going to go with the, the wires. will never make it. The wires will never make it. We can try. We'll see how long the extension will get. Just... Yeah, well, we'll have her come out when she comes out. Yes, maybe comes out this. Right. Woman today, uh, largely due to the work of Michael Cutler, an attorney in the United States. <laughs> this time I came to Amsterdam for fun. And when I got here, I saw that the green prisoner's shop was a little less than active. It was a little fallow, was the word I used. So I was lucky enough to... Uh, he didn't get to come here because he couldn't smuggle his dope into America, but I'd like to talk about Mother Superior Seed Company and the fact that they gave green prisoners release 15% of their profit to open our doors and to do some work for green prisoners. John talked about the green prisoners yesterday and he, he showed you the, uh, the leaf, which is in fact a green prisoner. In the United States, however, we have thousands of green prisoners. And people ask us, what do we do? And there's really not a fuck lot we can do. We can educate, we can protest, we can seek to change legislation. But there's one thing we can definitely do. We can write to these people. These are just 
cool little Holland postcards, the kind that you never buy so they don't have to go on it. Cows, you see cows everywhere here. Uh, these are some of the many things that we're trying to do at Green Prisoners Release. We have wonderful greeting cards which Katrina Cooper. Every one of you saw her as you came in the front door. She's a red-headed woman, along with her husband, Danny Cooper, who have done artwork, laminates, lovely groovy little laminates for Green Prisoners. These things are definitely um, for sale, for lack of a better term, but they're for sale so that we can outreach to more people, so that we can educate more people so that we can do something. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, and I belong to Mass Cannabis Coalition, and I work with them, and I work with some really good, good people, good attorneys, professors, doctors, psychiatrists, and they all piss me off. They piss me off because, like me, they're 46 years old. I've been smoking dope for 30 years. And I've got kids. I've got teenage kids. And I can see that there are some old farts like me here. And what I'm suggesting is, do not lie to your children. Do not let the D.A.R.E. program educate your children about drugs. My daughter turned 24 years old on the 23rd of November. When she was three years old, she could clean dope on a Steely Dan album cover. And she remembers that as quality time with Dad. And it was quality time with Dad, you know? And there's this whole thing going where we're closeted. And we can learn a lot from the gay movement. We have got to come out. Doctors have got to come out. Lawyers have got to come out. People have got to come out. They've got to, I mean, you're talking about 80 million smokers? Where the fuck are they? Why do we have Bill Clinton? Not that he's a real bad guy, but I mean, come on, what kind of an asshole does it inhale, right? I mean, what, you give somebody some herb and he goes, oh, excuse me. I mean, he's insulting you to your face. And why is it that, I'm 46, right? I thought we were going to do something different. And what's happened to my generation is we've been cut off like a little lily pad. And we've been floating along the cosmic waters. I thought we were going to be an avant-garde with all these people behind us. But we've been co-opted. We're afraid to talk to our kids. We're, we're, we'll pee in the cup at work and all the rest of it. And they are Fourth Amendment issues, and somebody referred to the Ninth Amendment, the little known Ninth, Ninth Amendment, and the Tenth Amendment, which says that the things that you hold to the people remain with the people. And one of those things that remain with the people is their right to cure themselves, their right to experiment on themselves, the right to blow their mind. I think it's a constitutional right. I've actually had the opportunity to uh, write an argument for a gentleman in Nebraska. This cat in Nebraska. He's 65 years old. We want you to We want you to go in there and we start shooting. Okay. Give her give me like one minute. One minute. Send a greeting card to someone in prison. Come right over. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to have a bloom uh, guest appearance. <laughs> she was trying to. And uh, coming up next, uh, let's give a rousing round of applause for Rita Marley. <laughs> So don't miss that. knowing that this was happening here. And so I want to tell you that it's just one love, one heart, one aim, one destiny. And we're all singing the same song. Yes, we're all singing the same song. And we're all feeling the same vibes. And from the rest of my family, you know, they asked me to, Mommy, please, even Bob said to me in my vision this morning, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills, and far away that it's one love. And thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having me. And I love you very much. God bless you. Read about it.
Rita will be performing tonight with the Cannabis Cup Band, so see us later in the other room across the way. And now put your hands together for Fantuzzi and Friends. A livication, a little Rasta meditation. For the Marley family that brought out this vibration to the world. For the healing of the nation, for as it was in the beginning, is now and forever shall be.
here we go, here we go. know whether Bob Marley really wrote this song because I I've never heard it in a recording but I heard it somewhere and someone said that Bob wrote it so this is for all the people who are divinely intoxicated with the love of life and the love of God yes and it's in Spanish and it goes like this and you have to repeat after me You can just say loco. Yes, estoy loco, 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 loco. Y hago lo que yo puedo. Y estoy loco, 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 loco. Y hago lo que yo puedo. Yo no tengo malo en mi corazón. Simplemente esta canción. Yo no tengo malo en mi corazón. Y estoy loco, 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 loco Y hago lo que yo puedo Y estoy loco, 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 loco ¡Au! Y hago lo que yo puedo Mira, yo no tengo nada en mi corazón Simplemente esta canción Translation. Man, right oh Lord, okay, I'm a child of child. Yes, I'm mad, mad. Loco, that's right. I'm a child of child. I've got no color in my heart. Only a song that just can't stop. I've got no color in my heart. Only a song that just won't stop. Take it away.
I'm your host Diego at the High Hemp Hall, and uh, we got a lot more entertainment for you coming up. Uh, one more little rap uh, with Stephen Gaskin, and uh, we'll be on our way. Give him a round of applause for Stephen. Housekeeping here about tomorrow. I'm going to be hosting the religious rights seminar in this room at uh, three o'clock, and uh, I will open with a reading from Cannabis Spirituality. If Liz's husband brings it here on the plane tomorrow, <laughs> because we don't have one, and then the regular 4:20 at the regular time. Now the ballots are going to be out tomorrow in the morning. Get your ballot. The ballot box is by the information booth by the front door of this place. So when you come in, make your ballot. You know? And we need all your help because listen, as a matter of like kind of like historical honesty, uh, should be. I'd really love to be a yes. celebrity judge. Whew, it was such fun, man. And this is back before they, they let you give them as many samples as they wanted. I had 26 samples from one house. You know, I had 80 samples in my bag. I didn't have a snowball's chance in hell of getting through that and understanding anything. You know, but among you thousand and more people, however many there are of you, you know, that the certain amount of statistical truth is going to be able to emerge. So you guys are the real judges. It's not like that the celebrity judges are the real judges. You guys are the actual and the real judges. And uh, I await your decision with tremendous interest, like the uh, cat that ate the Limburger cheese. I wait with bated breath. And anybody uh, have anything they want to say here before we close off this here talking portion of this? What are we up to here? Up to getting stoned, but I, I, I'll second that. I've been stoned. You know, the miraculous thing is, with just bulk amounts of dope that I've been smoking, I've not been soggy, I've not been sleepy, I've been active and I'm doing it and rolling and, and thinking all day long, and I've been going to bed at a reasonable hour at night and sleeping about 10 hours and getting up ready to do it again. And, I'm actually having a healthy vacation and staying as stoned as I possibly can. Yeah. <laughs> it's working good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Hoping you were the same. Yeah. It is medicine. You know, a skinny cat like me, you know, I bless it every meal. You know, I'd be a bag of antlers if I didn't have reefer. <laughs> huh? Yeah. yeah. I bet it really helps, man. Yeah. No, I just yeah. ran out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you, I know that every head in the world supports you, too. Yeah. Okay, guys, I'm, yes? Yes, ma'am. Come speak to me. Um, I know in the literature it encouraged people that had never been here before not to speak if there was a, this was your first year. But I might not have the money to come yet, so I'm me and I'm going to talk. I've heard a lot of people up here today say they don't know how to start. Well, in our town, the police busted 24 people at once. It was a big sting operation. Our town is 2,500 people in Northwest Montana. And there was a guy ranting and raving about 650 people, 650 coffee shops being spied on here. Well, in our town, it feels like 650 cops to one of us. And so my friends and I started at the very bottom. We took on the county sheriff. We went to the courthouses. We got copies of all the court testimony that had been in all those trials. And, dur and during our investigation, we turned up horrible things that the police in our town were doing. And everybody poo-pooed us, said, oh no, uh-uh. 
You know, the cops would never do that. Cops are always right. Uh -uh. When we started getting death threats and our cars started being demolished and we were singled out for harassment and we caught him on the telephone at three in the morning, we got him. I mean, we're, some of us are still being harassed. But because we did what we did, we proved that the county sheriff's officers were misusing federal funds by hiring people who were convicted heroin addicts, convicted rapists, convicted sex molesters. That's who they put on the street as narcotic agents against us. They put people on the street that hurt us more than they harmed us. We have pictures of a lady that they beat up and forced her to be injected with, with crank. Forced her. We have pictures. We showed them. We talked. We stood up in a town of 2,500 people, about three or four of us, and said, this is bullshit. And we're mad as hell, and we ain't taking it anymore, and the times are changing. We cost Lincoln County, Montana, their $96,000 drug grant. They don't have money to fight. They're still trying, but they don't have money to fight anymore. They're totally ineffective because nobody believes them. And we got rid of the district court judge, and we got rid of the county attorney. The sheriff is retiring after the next term. And, you know, we did stupid things in our county. They printed in a paper. Anybody who knows a drug pusher, and it was a coupon, anybody that knows a drug pusher, turn it in. Here, put it, use this coupon and send it. So we a bunch of us got together, and we wrote the name of the head narcotics agent on that paper, and we mailed it back to the sheriff's office just as we were requested to do. Um, somebody asked me if I'd do it again. Damn straight, I'd do it again. I, if this man has, uh, wants to take over Montana for his voting, then I'm gonna help him. Because I have been 35 years of my life smoking. And I'd have hung it up a long time ago, too, if it wasn't for him. And I don't do bad drugs. But I'm here to tell you, man, I'm going to be sitting in my rocking chair when I'm 95 years old. I don't know where I'm going to be, but I'm going to be having my stick of ganja in my hand. It's what keeps me young. Energy 51 really soon. And I started smoking when I was 17. And I'm not a basket case or a wasteoid or any of those things. And somebody in a car said to me as I was coming here, if you went through all of that, why did you stay in that town? Well, why do you think? Because now, huh, working within the system, you know what people know me for? They know me because I work with their kids at church. My minister knows I smoke. He walks right in the house and tells jokes about us sits down and reads us the politically correct version of the Ten Commandments and the Prodigal Son, um, the Ten Suggestions, and, you know, and he's cool with it. That's why I'm in the church I'm in. I believe that you can love God if you smoke cannabis. Read Leviticus. Leviticus says, Leviticus says that all the herbs of the world, all the herbs of earth, were put there for man's edification. Yeah. And any of your Christian brothers that give you crap about it, tell them and point them to that. Point them to that. Because, believe me, <laughs> your spirituality is in your heart. It's not in what somebody tells you. And, and it took me a while to learn that, but I'm glad I did. You know, um, I'm glad I was one of the first peace demonstrators in Montana. You know, if you're ever in Missoula, Montana, go to the shop eccentrics and look up on the wall, and they have a huge picture of myself and my friends. From somebody's estate, I have a sign that says, burn pot, not people. My friend has a sign that says, make love, not war. And our friend Charlie Brown Artman has a sign that says, war's not good for children and other living things. <laughs> and when I met Randy Weaver, I said, Randy, Randy, he said, I said, come and have a cup of coffee with me. He said, no, he said, if I come and talk to you, you'll get a bad reputation. 
And I said, Randy, 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 allow me to quote you a song from uh, the line from my favorite Melissa Etheridge song. I ain't asking you to keep no secrets, baby, because my reputation's already shot. <laughs> you know, and uh, privileged to meet people like Randy Weaver, you know, and we, our, our band wrote a song about his wife, and he loves it. Maybe someday that'll make us famous. But anyway, you guys are all really lucky to be here, be blessed by people like this man and people that can play the music. What, what, what's your name, babe? What's your name? Crispy. Crispy. <laughs> Call her Crispy because that's how they feel when they leave her house. That's toasted. <laughs> Alice, thank you, Alice. You know, and I'm really grateful to hear from you about that. And and I, I so respect your courage and you and your friends. And that the uh, Margaret Mead said, "Don't think that a few people with strong feeling uh, can't really change the world because that it's not only can it be done; it's the only way it ever gets done." You up? Okay? <laughs> I completely agree on what she said. I think that everybody should stand up to what they really feel and do what they really want, as long as they, they ain't harming anybody with, you know, it's no use forbidding something, somebody to do something that really is just a play thing or an amusement, or maybe something that you really need to get around, like this one, maybe it's cycling, that you need dogs to stay cool, keep their brains together. And what I hope to say is that people should try to get it out and stop being ignorant. Because ignorance is big in here too. They're trying to crowd us down, to cringe us down. Every year they're trying to make it harder and harder on us to keep on doing what we really want to do, which is make this all free and possible for everybody. <coughs> and only combined effort can really keep this together. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much.